Take your Bibles, if you would, and turn over to Ephesians chapter 2 this morning. You should have received a, a little brief message outline in your bulletin this morning, and we're going to try and stick with that. I got a question. Are you satisfied this morning with the Savior? Now, our brother missionary here this morning said he'd been saved 51 years. And it gets better as it goes along, doesn't it, brother? Um, I got saved May 8th, 1969. And uh, my life changed. Uh, I don't believe exactly now as I did then. Why is that? Because there's some growth that comes in. Uh, it starts as soon as you receive Christ. And I might say, um, whether you use the term receive Christ, believe Christ, accept Christ, get saved, I don't care what your terminology is, as of some of that people split hairs over. But whoever believes has received. And whoever has received, they've already believed. Um, message title this morning, Satisfied with the Savior. Um, I probably am going to be speaking to two groups of people this morning. Um, the satisfied and the not satisfied. I'd like to think that everybody here was satisfied with the Savior uh, and that you know Jesus Christ uh, and that your life has changed. Um, but by the same token, if you're here and you never have believed, and as it says in the book of Hebrews, to the saving of your soul, that this might be the day of salvation for you. Now, I remember the day that I was saved. And I remember the circumstances that led up to it. Uh, long time ago. Uh, and I'm satisfied. God has been good to me. Um, you think about all that makes up your life. And the things that come into your life. Uh, some of them are pleasant some of them not so pleasant uh, but I'm satisfied are you satisfied this morning do you know him um, are you settled are you settled in what you believe uh, are you do you feel safe now I got to be careful as I use the term feel uh, some people use the term feeling, but it's more of a, a sense of a knowing. Uh, are you settled? Are you safe? Are you resting in Jesus Christ? Now, I got three simple points this morning. In verses uh, one through three, we're going to talk about sin. Uh, that's something people don't like to talk about. Uh, then in verses... Uh, four through nine, we talk about salvation. That's my second S. And then stewardship in verse 10. Uh, and as we begin, let's just have a brief word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you this morning for the word of God. We thank you, Father, for our dear pastor. And Father, it was because of the preaching that our pastor that I heard uh, is the reason that my wife and I came to this church. Uh, and Lord, there's many uh, and much preaching that will happen today. Some of it is the truth. Some of it is not the truth. But Father, we thank you for our pastor and we thank you for this pulpit and the truth that goes forth from it. I pray, Father, uh, that we might be satisfied and resting in you, that we might know you and by the same token, you might know us, uh, as it says in Matthew chapter 7. And Father, if there's anybody here that's not satisfied, 
because they're not in Christ today. They never have received or believed. Father, might the Word of God, uh, might the Word of God and the Holy Spirit of God draw them and might they believe on you to the saving of their soul today. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Take a look, if you would, at uh, Ephesians chapter 2, and let me begin reading in verse 1. And it says, and you hath he quickened. Now that means made alive. Uh, in this case, given spiritual life. Um, now some people change, and they think they got saved. They make a change. Uh, that happens a lot around the first of the year, where you have all these New Year's resolutions and you're gonna change something. Well, changing doesn't make you saved. But when you get saved, there will be a change. See, the, the Pharisees had a change on the outside. They had an outward righteousness, but inside they were, what was it the Lord called them? Whited sepulchres full of dead men's bones. There was no spiritual life there. There's a lot of people that have religion and they play the game and they know the lingo and they're comfortable amongst many Christians, but they themselves have never really believed. There's some that are lightheaded. They're not sober minded in the way they think about things and they've never really taken it to heart. By the way, let me say this. If you've never seen yourself the way the Bible describes you, uh, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? If you've never seen yourself and compared yourself to Jesus Christ, you don't have the full picture. Now, people want to compare themselves with other people. Don't do that. Uh, you can always find somebody a little uh, worse than you or a little better than you. It doesn't matter. You compare yourself to the Lord. And I think about this holy, this perfect, this holy creator God. And he said light. There was light. And he created all of, you know, we're spending billions of dollars and whatever they do because they want to travel up there into, I have no desire to do that. Uh, you know, Captain Kirk, I guess, just recently made, he, he finally made it to outer space real quick and came back. Well, listen, for, I have no desire that these people are approaching it from the wrong way. If you're a believer, you're going to go beyond the first heaven, which is the atmosphere. You're going to go beyond the second heaven where all the planets and stars are. And you're going to go to the third heaven, which is the abode of God. It says that in the book of Corinthians. Um, I have no desire to approach it from their angle. Just think, a space shuttle goes, what, 17,000 miles an hour? And that's old technology right now. I mean, that's moving right along. But it takes them a long time to get anywhere out there. And we're going to be there instantaneously. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 8, to be for the, if you're a believer, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now that's, fat, that, that's moving on. Uh, and we're going to be there. That's where you're headed. By the same token, someone who's not a believer is going to end up in a temporary, a temporary holding place. That's called hell, and it is temporary because the permanent place is going to be the lake of fire. Book of Revelation says, And death and hell delivered up the dead which were, in they, which were in them, and every man was judged according to his works. By the way, at that great white throne, there's no winners. Every single person that goes to that great white throne is headed for a place called the lake of fire. The book of Revelation calls it the second death. But anyway, here in Ephesians 1, it says, you hath he quickened who were, past tense, 
dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Now who would that be? That's Satan. And he's the God of this world. And you'll notice when you read that in Corinthians that it's a little g. He's not the God, he's a little God. Uh, he made himself a God. He wants to be worshipped as God. And whether it's Ezekiel 28 or Isaiah 14, where you see the five I wills, he wanted to be God. He wanted to replace God. Uh, he, he had power. He was the anointed cherub that covereth. Well, what was he covering? Mercy seat. Wow. Um, I'll tell you what. Christians today don't realize what they've got. Uh, we, you folks know, you that are satisfied, and I'm using the term satisfied this morning, as someone that knows Christ. Now, I don't care whether you've known him just a short period of time or for a period of time that took up the majority of your life. By the way, more of my life is in back of me than is in front of me. Uh, I've rounded the first base, second base, third base, and I don't know, how, I guess there's only four bases, but I'm on the last way around. And it's, I'm closer, I'm closer to heaven than I was yesterday. And so are you. Uh, there was a sin problem. Uh, the prince of the power of the air, verse two, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. What do you mean worketh? Well, you look around at our world system. Man, we're on a slide. Uh, we're picking up speed as we're moving along. Things that, uh, when I was back in Bible college, I, and I heard about these things, I thought, you know, I, I just can't put the, I, and now all the, you take it from the 70s all the way up to like 50 years later, there's been a tremendous amount of change. Now, some things in different areas have been good, but the majority of it, it's just setting up the world stage for the Antichrist, the one that's gonna come. Uh, the world will love its own. Now, you in the workplace where you're out working among whoever in whatever vocation you are, you start taking a stand for Christ and speak up the way you ought to speak, there may be a few people that will appreciate it, but the majority will not. Uh, quite frankly, I think all of us are pretty soft, including me. Now we got a revival that we're scheduled for here coming up very soon. And we need to be praying for that because I think we all need to be revived. Uh, tremendous opportunities we miss sometimes. Um, please notice in verse three, it says, among whom also we had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Now I've got several cross references here under the, the word sin. And we're talking about sin, salvation, and stewardship. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now you might be sitting there this morning and think, well, I only missed it by a little. I got news for you. When you compare yourself with absolute perfection. Now, when I think about that, that causes me to have like a meltdown. See, I, I know me. Uh, and even there's parts of me that are so bad, I don't even know me. Uh, I'm talking about a rotten, depraved, old 
nature. Now I got saved May 8th, 1969. There was a change that took place. And there's been a lot of changes down through the years. But how close am I to perfection? Long way. Uh, except he changed me. Now he already has on the inside. See, there was the new birth that took place. Uh, and therefore now, 1 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore now if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. There's a change, but the problem is I still got an old nature. And that old nature is interpenetrated with this stuff called flesh. Now, I, I, uh, I've already received, and you too, if you're one that's satisfied, and I'm putting the word satisfied together here with salvation and knowing and believing and receiving and accepting, you're the real thing, you're a Christian. That you've already received the down payment. The Bible uses an old term that you don't hear, hear much anymore. My grandfather used the term. Earnest, anybody know what earnest money was? It was down payment. That's back in the days when they did business and you went to the bank and, and things were concluded with just one signature on one piece of paper and a handshake. And the people, that everybody honored what was, today you sign away something as thick as a phone book and, and th it's just crazy. It's, it's, it's all gone. But earnest money was down payment. Now you've got the down payment. What is that? It's the Holy Spirit of God. And when you got saved, he came in, he indwells you. By the way, he's never leaving, never leaving. Why is that? Because he sealed you. Not only did he seal you, he is the seal. So he stayed. But you see, we still got this old nature and it's interpenetrated with the flesh. You're gonna get rid of it. You will get rid of it. You will be rid of it. In one of two ways. You're either going to die and you're going to leave this body of flesh behind. It's, you ain't taking it with you. It's not worthy of heaven. It couldn't handle heaven. It, by the way, it couldn't handle the trip to heaven. That's going to be fast. The other way is the rapture, which we're looking forward to. And that could happen at any time. And we will be changed. Uh, but Christ and what he did took care of sin. Now, verse 4, it talks about salvation. And there's these other verses you can look up, plus dozens and dozens and dozens of verses more. Those of you in our Sunday school class, don't be alarmed. I realize we've been on the church at, um, well, on the six churches for quite a while. Uh, but anyway, we are gaining ground gradually. But isn't it amazing the verses that are all tied together? I sit down and read the scripture and it's like putting yourself on a spiritual battery charger. I mean, it just builds me up. Uh, it's wonderful. It's, it's precious. Now, we had a, an Alabamian preacher in here a little while ago. I believe his name was Stephen Doss. Maybe he'll listen to this. Um, but he, sa he made a comment one night when he was here preaching to us. And I know I don't get the wording quite right, but boy, it got me. The Word of God is like a love letter to Christians. And you see the love of God through the whole thing. Now, those that are, that get bogged down in more than the these and the thous, 
and they see some of the rough stuff that took place in the Old Testament, which was judgment on sin. By the way, this will be unpopular, I'll say it anyway. I know everybody wants to say, God bless America. Uh, but in my way of thinking, you can't abort as many babies as we, if you aborted one, it'd be sin. We have aborted a whole nation of people. Uh, and it's like sin stacked upon sin. We're a wicked nation. Amen. Sorry. That's right. We are. Amen. It is. Uh, they've re they're rewriting history. I don't even want to get into that, but it's amazing how fast changes are taking place. Aren't you glad that you're saved? I mean, truly, aren't you glad that you're saved? Now, every time the gospel is preached, a call goes out. And some believe, and some believe not. Those that believe are going. Those that believe not are going to be left behind. Uh, and it's a frightening frightening thing. Brother Donnell um, did an excellent job in Sunday school this morning. He talked about alcohol. You know, every time I was called for jury duty, and it seemed like they would get me every year, they'd ask me a question because it'd be on a drunk driving case or something. And they'd say, do you have, will the blah, 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 will it affect your decision? I said, well, my younger brother was killed in a car wreck by a drunk deputy sheriff. I said, is that going to count for anything? Do you think that will influence my thinking? I was out of there. Uh, no good ever comes out of any of that. Uh, if you're not caught up in that, thank God, number one, and pray for those that are, number two. Uh, Salvation, John chapter 1 and verse 12. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. See, you read the word of God, what it says on the wall back there, Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So God gives you the faith and the Holy Spirit makes that application. See, when you get saved, it's a spiritual birth. Now you're gonna believe one of two ways. You either believe you're gonna get there on your own, or you're gonna believe that you're gonna go the way of the cross, which is Jesus Christ. You say, well, I'm a member of thus and such religion or whatever. It, it, Whosoever hath the Son hath life. And whosoever hath not the Son of God hath not life. Uh, do you believe? Have you received? Uh, is it settled down inside, down deep in your soul? Where nobody else can see. Uh, and you can fool people. Now you can't fool God. So is what you have real? Do you think you're going to get in because you prayed a verbal out loud prayer that other people around you heard or are you saved because you believed in the finished work of Christ? Now, after studying the Bible, some years more intently than others, depending upon what I was doing, 
In four months, less than 40 years, I pastored six churches. Three of them were big enough to support me full time so I didn't have to work a job. Three of them were not, so I worked. Paul made tents, I fixed cars. Um, doesn't matter how big, but you know, in the time of studying the scripture, some things have changed. It's like your roots go down deeper. Uh, he's more real. I, uh, I liken it to this a little bit. Now, my wife this time and I are around if we make it to July. She says that, uh, by the way, that uh, I'm almost trained. Um, She's almost got me the way I need to be, but I'm not quite there. And she's decided to hang on to me because it's too late to start over. Um, but I remember the first time I told her that I loved her. And I did. But the love I have for her now, uh, far beyond what I had back there 50 years ago for you understand when I believed on Jesus he changed my life now one of the things that caused me to believe was the fact that the message was so different than everything else I'd heard um But I've changed and I've grown and I'm still growing. You are too, by the way. You, you can grow as fast as you want to. Um, God works. Uh, and he works at things. He'll give it to you as fast as you can handle it. Um, but salvation will change you. Um, let me read these verses very quickly. In John chapter 3, and I'm just going to read them. I can't comment on them. I've got three minutes left. And our pastor and his wisdom usually ends on time. And he's made the comment, if you end on time, you stand a better chance of having them come back again. So I will end on time. It says in John chapter 3 and verse 14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of god verse 36 he the uh, uh, he that believeth on the son hath everlasting life and he that believeth not the son shall not see life but the wrath of god abideth on him now i have one minute left Stewardship, point number three. It says for our text, the final verse, and the others I realize I didn't get to all of them. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship. Ephesians 3.10, excuse me, 2.10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You ought to be resting in Christ, but working real hard for him. Now, that's not a contradiction. Because you work because you're saved, not to be saved. Uh, are you satisfied with Jesus? Uh, in John chapter 6... And uh, those verses, John 6, 66, <laughs> that's an easy one to remember. 
Many of his disciples said, this is a hard saying, who can, uh, who, can, who can hear it? And from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. You go a little further down and, and, and uh, Jesus says to Simon Peter, will you also go away? Classic answer. Peter said, he got this one right. Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Now, I'm talking to two types of people this morning. Those that are saved and you're satisfied. And those of you that still have not been saved, you're on the outside looking in. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Brother Chris, would you come?